Hey guys, Idre here, and I'm going to be doing an album review. A new one. This one is going to be of the new Justin Bieber album, Changes. Now, let me just say, going into this, my expectations weren't necessarily the highest for a few reasons. For one, I have been relatively critical of his music really since the beginning. I remember growing up with songs like Baby and that really early stuff, and that gave me a really bad idea from the start of what kind of music he was making, and I think that's relatively justifiable. I mean, he's definitely improved as an artist, even if I don't think it's by as much as some people may say. Um, let me just see one... Oh my god, that got really bright, or really dark. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, the album Purpose in 2015 i felt was the strongest thing he had done i think it was definitely a point where he was starting to expand more as an artist but i did kind of lose touch haven't heard much from him really since then I've, although i have heard a lot of features here and there and um i've had really mixed feelings over the past few years regarding him mainly main most of which comes from the fact that i think he has talent but it's just not being utilized in the way it should be and um i feel like that's kind of troublesome because it's sad to see some of these artists make music that doesn't really suit, you know, what they're able to do. So, this album, uh, he definitely follows up with the trends. I mean, one of the things is, that's really worth noting about this album is the heavy trap influence on here. The, and the heavy usage of a lot of the techniques that are used in modern hip-hop. Uh, I will say some of the pros about the music on this thing is that I feel like the instrumentals on here are actually pretty decent. I think it's very atmospheric, and I think that it, um, at least on the first half, I think that it really does draw me in more to the actual songs. But on the second half of the album, there's a lot more guitar-based ones with a lot more acoustic and a lot more electric guitar. But the problem is, these songs are very mellow, and they don't go anywhere. You know, I'm all for slower ballad songs as long as they go somewhere. And a lot of these songs end up being really oversung without going anywhere. So it's pretty much very basic guitar, not much structure or, you know, anything like that. But being very oversung and it really takes me out of the album. But I will say on the first half there's good atmosphere. And I think some of the trap beats are actually pretty decent here for a pop song. Uh, one of the, some of the cons on this thing, though, is that it's hard to tell what he's trying to go for. Is he trying to be more rap-oriented, or is he trying to be more, um, singer? Because on some songs, there's definitely times where I, you could hear him try to rap a little more, but he just, it, it's not his comfort zone. You know, when he sings in moderation, it's good, but he does over-sing over a lot of these songs, and a lot, oftentimes it becomes very repetitive-sounding, and oftentimes forgettable. I feel like this starts strong and kind of ends pretty rough. You know, going into some of the songs that I actually felt were very, uh, well, pretty strong compared to the rest, Come Around Me has a decent hook, a good instrumental, and good atmosphere, which I definitely can appreciate. Uh, the song Forever featuring Post Malone and Clever is one of the better ones. I wish that they actually utilized Post Malone a bit more on this song because their voices do actually go to together pretty well. Uh, on Posty's song, Deja Vu. I think it's a really good example of their voices going together. Unfortunately, I feel like he was cut a little short. But either way, Forever is, to me, one of the highlights. And really, the third one that really stuck out to me the most is Confirmation. It seems to me like a very mu a much more improved version of the song ETA and Changes, which I will get to later. Right now, actually, the songs ETA and Changes are very mellow and very uh, interesting take on the little guitar thing that this is built upon. But there are some things that I can say is a little kind of frustrating. These songs both start off fine, especially ETA, but they don't go anywhere. They don't. And it's good guitar work for like a mellow pop song, but the vocals are so oversung that it takes away from the guitar work. Um, and this doesn't really end up leading to anything interesting, and it just kind of ends up being cut short around two something minutes before it actually has any lasting impact on you. This would happen again. The being cut short is a common theme here. The song Sweet. Um, I'm forgetting out his name. 
Uh, second emotion, not sweet emotion, I was thinking of Aerosmith, sorry about that, featuring Travis Scott, is another song that it's not bad and it's not horrible, but it could have gone much further. <clears throat> you know, Travis Scott features, I always look forward to, because oftentimes the way he's produced the, the, you know, the verses that he gives and the ad libs, it adds a lot to the song. On this one, it just, it just sucks because he was cut short. The production was kind of eh on his voice, and overall, he didn't add much to it. And honestly, I could say the same thing about the song Available. The song has a good hook, and I definitely, it's one of the more memorable ones, but I just feel like it gets cut short before it has any lasting impact on me. But these songs aren't bad. I'm actually going to, and then now I'm going to get to the songs that I actually dislike a bit more. Um, starting off, the song um, Intentions... I just feel as bad. I don't think there's anything much to it. The song Yummy I had previously heard before, and I really am not a huge fan of that song at all. I think the way he promoted it was pretty bad, and I think that just <sighs> lyrically I feel like the song's lacking, and I think that it's just overall not that good of a song. And Take It Out On Me, I just really, it's my least favorite melody on this album. I find it to be very unoriginal, very, uh, obnoxious when you hear it more than once and uh what does that say my notes are a little sloppy today uh that's what i love that's that's what i meant to say that's what i love feels unfinished that's all you know and this is a common theme and it's not that it's cut short and concise like say xxx Tentacion has done on a lot of his material to me, what this sounds like is unfinished demos that were produced very well with oversung vocals slapped onto the end of this album. It feels like two different albums. The first half really isn't that bad, you know, and actually it, it reminds me a lot of the Young Lean album, Stranger. You know, not only is it just the music, but the aesthetic, which is why I have red lights, by the way. And I actually appreciate that because I really like that album, Stranger, by Young Lean. And, um, I actually, I really like the atmosphere of the beginning, but as the album goes on, the atmosphere gets worse. The sappy guitar songs get very tiring really fast. And unfortunately, that drags the album down a little bit. You know, Justin Bieber has a really bad reputation. And I 100% get why. You know, he started off in the beginning of, like, in, like, 2008, 2009, or 2010, somewhere around there, with some really not interesting singles, some obnoxious ones, and the promotion was off the charts. And he kind of improved a little bit as an artist and as a vocalist, but I feel like his career hasn't gone anywhere because he's making music that limits himself, and that's very prominent on this album. So, with all that in mind, unfortunately, I had to give this album a light four. You know, giving it any higher, I feel like, it would just be me lying to myself, forcing myself to like it. But this album isn't the worst thing I've ever heard, and, um, you know, it's kind of what I expect from Justin. So all that being said, you know, Light 4, that's it for now. What do you guys think of the album? Comment down below. That's it for now.